know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, family. Um, I'm so happy to be with you guys this evening. And, you know, I always have that special extra smile when Professor James Small is in the house. So it's going to be a lovely show. Uh, I just want to give, a, a, you know, give people a, a minute to come through. Thank you for, um, uh, you know, sticking with our time. Yes. Hotep family. Sharon, how are you doing today, tonight? Um, we are, um, it's been so much happening over in, um, in Hoppy Land. But before we get to all the stuff that's happening, let's just um, kind of just recap some stuff that, you know, we always do. If you are not signed up for the newsletter, which goes out tomorrow, okay, make sure you head over to our, um, our website, happyfilm.com. I'll put that up in a minute. Um, and uh, hit the Get Connected button, which you then you leave your email address, and then we're able to add you to the mailing list and you get it. It's important to get the, um, the newsletter. We put all the good stuff in the newsletter. And you're like the first group of people that get to get, like if we're making any special announcements, which we will be making some special announcements, not tomorrow um, edition, but um, before the year is up. And you want to be first in on it. So you want to make sure that um, you are, uh, you know, very connected um, to us in terms of having, you know, uh, us having your email address. So let me just go ahead and uh, put that up right there. All right. So also, while you are on Happy Film, see, listen, you can do everything all at once. If you want to, which you should, like a lot of times, you know, a lot of times you guys are watching Happy Talks and you don't even know that we have a whole two hour and 12 minute documentary about the history of money started at the Hoppy Valley. And um, you can purchase the DVD, or you can just live stream it. We also have our One Africa Conference, 12 hours of our esteemed elders and scholars breaking down the power of unity uh, from the conference that we had in Detroit in April. Um, also on there, we have our other uh, fe feature lens films. We have Nubia, The Untold Story, and we have The Tekken. So we got a lot of stuff. We have t-shirts. We now have hoppy hats. So just head on over to happyfilm.com. You can get all your needs, all like in one, like one key, well, no, a couple keystrokes. All right. Uh, make sure, family, that you are um, liking and sharing this video. Now, that's like the most, one of the most important things. OK, in terms of support is that, um, you know, uh, we have to uh, be able to, to we want to you know, keep sharing this information to not just the people that are looking at us right now live, but to everyone. So please like and share and comment this video. We need to like change this algorithm. All right. So, um, you know, we like the power of three. So you need to send this to at least three other people. And everybody know three people that you can send this, um, you know, this happy talks to. It's going to be great. Uh, you know, Professor always brings it anyway. Uh, also, if you got like all our merchandise, you've seen all our films, you got the hat, you have the poster, you got everything. And you just want to give us a donation, which we will gladly accept. You can hit us up on cash app, the dollar sign at uh, dollar sign happy film. And listen, all the money that we get, it goes right back into our um into into our family in terms of we spend our money with people that look like us. Um, and so, you know, like all of these things that we're doing, they're not exactly free. So they, they cost money. And so when you guys actually contribute, it goes back into the um, it, it goes back into the family so that we're able to bring people like Professor James Small out to, um, to talk to you and uh, a slew of people. If you just hit, visit us on YouTube, you can see we have about 200 shows on there. That's like, wow. Um, so, yeah, you want to check us out on uh, YouTube, but definitely you can hit us up on the cash app. And um, also, 
if you, you know, you don't want to do cash app. And if you're on Facebook, now this is like really cool because this is a sort of like a new thing that's happening with us. Uh, you can buy stars on Facebook. That's how you support us. So if you're on YouTube, you can hit the super chat. But if you're on Facebook, you can buy stars. So this is how, you know, you support the movement. Um, and what is the Hoppy movement? It's four principles. Number one, love black people. Number two, support black businesses. Number three, um, make sure you are financially astute with your money. And number four, teach the youth the truth. Um, so that is the Hoppy movement. Everything we do is centered around the hop, around those principles. So, you know, make sure that you are uh, supporting any way that you can. And the least that everyone can do is like and share this video. All right. Um, a couple more shout outs. We got Ron Spears in the house. Make sure you have his book. I'm just saying, Ron, put it, just go ahead and type it on in there. Um, it's an excellent book. Um, he's a friend to, to Hoppy, um, to the Hoppy family. And um, yeah, just shout out to all of our, our regulars that's up in the house. I see you, Brian. Simply Save. Oh, John Henry Staples from Florida. How are you doing, sir? This is one of our, um, our elders is in the house. So nice to see you. Well, I can't see you, but it's nice to see, you know, right there from Riverview, Florida. It's nice to um, have you in the house. That's what's up. You know, you know, you know we're going to have a good show if we have John Henry Staples in the house. All right. Um, peace to um, Arden Plumbing. Um, he came with us on our trip. Yeah, we said hi to Sharon. So, um, and Dr. Harris. Dr. Harris was our esteemed host in uh, Detroit. Um, he, he was the host of the One Africa Power and Unity Conference. He is also the president of the National Business League. There's only been four, and he is the fourth one. He is a dynamic brother. You got to follow him on Facebook. Just go, if you're on Facebook now, go to his page, like him, because he puts up positive things every single day. And he's doing a lot of, he's making a huge um, um, announcements. He's doing a lot of stuff. So just make sure you are following Dr. Harris. All right. I'm going to bring in um, Professor uh, so that we can um, chat. Oh, I see you in the house, Tika. All right. Hey, Professor. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> and hello to the happy family. And yeah. I hope you heard Sister Felicia tonight because we really want to raise some capital to help the happy family along so they can get more work done. So please tap in, tune in, and purchase all of our equipment from tapes to t-shirts to hats to uh, downloads and make sure that Happy, happy, stable economic foundation is up to us. Our enemy is not going to keep us going. They're not going to keep us on the air. If we like what happy does, if we like whom happy brings to us, then we are obligated to do everything we can to see that happy can continue to do that financially. So please, we'll be coming back to you as the evening go to talk about these things. Uh, that we want you to purchase and make any contributions that you feel your heart want to, to help happy along. We need those contributions. That's how we exist. If we don't get that, we go off air. And if we go off air, you don't get to see all the fantastic lecturers. You don't get to see uh, what we did on the fantastic trips to Kemet. You don't get an opportunity to take more people to Kemet on more fantastic trips. And Kemet is fun, it's enjoyable, but it's a history lesson. It's an archaeological lesson. It's an anthropology lesson. It is a spiritual lesson, you know. So, But you can't do this without the support of your people. And thank you for all the support you've given us thus far. Absolutely. Happy would not exist without the support that we've gotten from the happy family, you know. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm seeing? I'm looking here and I'm like, wow, all these people that are that I'm putting up messages from, they've all traveled with us this year mm. and some people have, have come twice. Mr. Uh, Carolyn Tyler is in the house. She's been with us twice. 
which brings us um, um, to our, our next order of business before we get started on our, our conversation tonight, is that we just came back from Kemet last week. So you guys can't really see my tan. Oh, it's, it's a nice tan. This is like all even. It's so nice. It was, uh, we had a beautiful time um, over there. And um, Infuti Miss was our fearless leader along with, um, with Nuha. We had a good time in Kemet. So I'm going to just share just a couple of pictures. And this is the thing, while we're um, getting this together, you guys should make sure that you are signed up to all our social media so you can see, um, you know, you can just take your time and uh, scroll, scroll through pictures. We're gonna be putting up pictures. We have goo gobs and pictures and we're gonna be putting them up all month. Um, so, you know, make sure that you are, um, that you are, um, Oh, you know what? That's a good idea. I should have my glasses too. I don't know why I'm trying to play myself without them. Yeah, it's time to read stuff and wasn't happening. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. It's like I can't see it until I actually put it up on the screen. So, um, yes, um, but yes. So we're, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share just these are just a couple of slides. And when I started putting this together, I was like, this could be a hundred slides. And I was like, we don't have time to show a hundred hundred slides. So I just picked out some a couple of pictures to kind of get you to get you guys like in the mood, especially if you haven't come to Kemet. We, um, you know, earlier this year we had a trip scheduled, and um, you know, some um, outside forces were were interfering with us bringing people to Kemet. And, um, you know, one of the brothers that was key in us staying focused and us getting this, um, you know, doing this conference and getting more people. We, so we had an original amount of people going, but then we ended up bringing um, about 85 people like at the end of May. And then we brought up another um, about 15 people last week. So over this year, you know, with somebody trying to shut us down dot com, we were able to get 100 people to Kemet which is great. And the man I'm talking about is Professor Small. That's right here in front of me. He was one that told us to keep on moving. And so I appreciate you, Professor. Um, yeah, Brenda Allen traveled with us too. So I'm gonna share with, share you, share with you guys. Um, I'm gonna try, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna share with you this, uh, my little slide presentation. Let's see if I got it right. You know, I've never actually done a slide presentation. Everyone, sometimes when people come, um, you know, they've done it. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. Okay, can you see that, um, Professor? No, ma'am. You can't see it? Okay. All right. Uh, Let me okay. see what am I not doing. I don't know. Okay, wait, family, were you able to see that? Let's start there. Were you guys able to see that? Somebody let me know in the chat if you saw um, the first couple of slides. And thank you, Kepra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what's up. That's going right to the happy, uh, the happy goals. Were you guys able to see the first slide that I showed? No, okay, all right. We gonna get it though. No, oh, okay. All right, let's try this again. Um, so professor, while I'm getting this together, can you just talk about the message that you, um, before they, Yes, ma'am. Um, which message? I have a lot of them. <laughs> you do have a lot of messages. Mm -hmm. uh, you do have a lot of messages. No, the, the message that you you always, well, not always, because we've only taken two trips, and you wrote a personalized message to um, to the crew in terms of, um, of us before we travel. And you talked about journey and what we should be thinking about when we are uh, making the travel to Kemet. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that particular message. It's like somebody saying, talk about your speech on, on spirituality. And there's about a thousand of those. Um, uh -huh. But there is a generic perspective. 
Um, Kemet is one of our major homes. Um, Africa is our home, the entire continent. Mm. Kemet represents one of our, not our greatest civilization, but one of our greatest civilizations. Um, what makes Kemet so significant is because of the ecology and the environment that allow for the saving of so much historical information. So we have the writing, the Medunetta, we have uh, the, 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 the temples, we have the carvings, we have so much that remain because of the desert ecology in relationship to the River Happy. Uh -huh. But that civilization that became Kemet came out of West Africa, Central Africa, and South Africa. And that's the piece we got to make clear. Kemet didn't grow up out of the ground, okay? The people who, who built Kemet came there after the desert, the Sahara dried up, and the people moved east. There was a river that was a real wild river. But as, as, as the happy began to create significant vegetation, on, and as the rain shipped southwards, and allowed for more water to go northwards down the Happy, Happy became an extraordinary fertile valley. So the people who was moving away from the drying up of the Sahara, where they had a magnificent civilization moving for thousands of years, where they, where they were already embalming bodies and the oldest embalmed body ever found is in the Sahara, not in Kemet. Uh, most of what we see as a spiritual sacred science is found in ancient Chad and the other Western civilization and in Congo. And these people converge. The rearing of cattle was already happening in West Africa and in, in that part of West Africa, which is made up by now the Sahara. And that population moved into Kemet. The calendar was already created by that pop. So many of the things we see that our people brought from other parts of the continent as the ecology changed, because climate change was significant, we see them converge. And because of the longevity of the ecological balance in Kemet, they were able to exaggerate their science, exaggerate their technology, exaggerate their medicine, and produce this enormous civilization that everybody in the world wants to claim. And the one person they don't want to claim it is the children of the creators of it. That's us. And so we can look at them and laugh and say, dream on, because in your mind, you know it's not yours, it's ours. Yeah. And everyone, like Muslims go to Mecca, everyone, I hate to say this, because we're giving our money to an Arab population who leadership don't appreciate the true children of Kemet, but oh. everyone should still go once in a lifetime and make a pilgrimage to either Kemet or to Nubia and the Sudan. Absolutely. With respects to our founding ancestors. Even the Kaaba, and that's the center core of Islam that sits in a desert in Saudi Arabia is a replica of the Ka and the Ba okay, that represents the divine when the two comes together as a symbol within one of the most powerful religions in the world. So yes, go home to the Happy Valley, but realize you're going home to Africa. Okay? And Africa is not a white man's name. Mm. Africa is a black tribal name from North Africa where Algeria and Tunisia is today. The white man came and found them calling themselves Afri and Afriye. And you can still go among the Ashanti nation who migrated from the ancient Ghana empire in Northwest Africa. And these families still retain the name Afriye as one of the leading spiritual families of the Ashanti nation. So. Study the etymologies of these words that we play with, like Kemet and, and Africa and Moors and others, and then go back home to the happy land, you know, and see what our ancestors left to guide us today. If we study Kemet, we'll learn how to 
unload the oppressions economically, politically, and culturally we're facing because we will learn to reload our minds. Only when we reload our minds will we be able to unload oppression and realize what a happy symbolizes. Hap the happy symbolizes the ability to create an economy for a community that wasn't rival by any. And so the concept that build the happy is the same concept that can build Detroit, the same concept that can build Cleveland, LA, Briscoe, New York, Jacksonville, Atlanta. But you have to study history to get rid of the white man's mystery and work your black economic magic. And that's what happy started out being about, how to work black economic magic. And that's why we want you to really donate tonight, come out of your pockets tonight, buy our artifacts tonight to show us how you can help Happy develop its economic magic so we can keep going and giving you the things that we want you to have in terms of historical ideas, principles, and concepts that are not outdated. You know, the, the moon is not outdated. The sun is not outdated. The constellations are not outdated. The great stars in the cosmos is not outdated. And Kemet was built on replicating the cosmology and partnering with the ecology. That's not outdated. So that's huge reality. And it, that's sacred science. And it can never be outdated. So Kemet and history can never be outdated. So study your history, erase the mystery, work your black economic magic, work your black intellectual magic, work your black spiritual magic, and do not be ashamed of what anybody thinks or say about you. When I come into this room with all of those folks you see behind me, yes. I'm the million. <laughs> I'm the power nexus. And on the other side of me, where you can't see is about 30 ancestors. Mm. Brace me everywhere I go. When I walk through a door, they have to squeeze through, you know. They're yeah. my and my staff. If you want to look at it from a uh, Western religious tradition, your ancestors is your rod and your staff. And you see all of the pharaohs having their rod and their staff, you know. And when yeah. you understand that, you understand that history allows you the skills and the ability to awaken the energy of your ancestors in you and to use the body wisdom that they represent to help transform your society. This is not just about taking pictures and having fun. We want to do that too. But your reason is to awaken the divine in you. The divine in you is the ancestors that created you. And when you go there, you find what real power is like. You find what real understanding is like. You know? It's like Malcolm X. You see him behind me there? You know? Yes. They, they killed them. But when they put those 19 bullets on that, that, in that body, they made him eternal. Everybody mm. in the world, on every continent, calls his name. Even today. Yes. It's, it's yes. Years later. So just as Malcolm is more alive than he ever was, our ancestors are more alive than they ever were, especially when you go to Kemet and bring them back home with you. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Let me tell you. Okay, wait, I'm just going to show these pictures. We're going to talk for a second, and we're going to get on with our conversation. But you are so right, uh, Professor. Um, it's, it's literally life-transforming. Um, oh, so let's just look at these pictures and then we, we gonna, we gonna talk, we gonna talk. Okay. Now let's see if I can figure out how to move it. <laughs> oh, oh I can do it. There, there we go. go. Oh, Impedisi, the hoodie man, my brother. Yes. He, he was our, yes, yes, yes. He was our teacher. I mean, he got it in. Besides looking so nice every day, I was like, how many outfits does this brother have? I mean, he was looking mm -hmm. sugar sharp every day. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, he he got it in. Okay, wait, hold on, let me. Oh, there you go. That's our brother Walid. He came with us, and um, he has he has a little Infudishi wings on. You know, Infudishi has a whole clothing line, but um, mm -hmm. this is we right before we left, we had a fifteen um, uh, a fifteen class. Um, like master class with Infudishi. And so Waleed was one of our um our uh, you know people in the class. Yeah, that's him and his mother, Miss Carol. And that's Miss uh Carolyn Tyler. She came with us last time down in the right right hand corner. We had such a good time. I tell you, hanging with the elders and when you're young, you just like you don't have you can't be sitting down because they didn't sit down. <laughs> so it was like we had to like just keep moving. There we are at Pyramid Giza. Yeah. Haru M. A Haru M. Aket. It's not the Sphinx. People call it the Sphinx, but it's not the Sphinx. We had we were on a ship, so they had a a little like Galabia night. So everyone had their Galabias on. There's Brittany, Dr. Motley, in my favorite place, Abu Simbel. Again, these elders, oh, just love them. And look at that sun. You see that Kimmet sun? That's the first thing you noticed when you saw me. You were like, oh, it looks like I had sun. Mm -hmm. And we had young people. We had this young little brother, little Marcus and his dad. Marcus was all right. We had a good time. There's Miss Tiffany. She came with us last time. There were so many people. Some of these um, sites were so packed. It's Dave Murphy, that's us again. You know, he was, little Marcus was just like, wow, you know, it's just, it's nice. There's our, you know, we've, we're always spotting Hoppy. That was Hoppy in Luxor Temple. Step Pyramid, Abu Simbel. Like, look at the, look, look at that. That's beautiful. Yep. And in Fudishi. All right. So if you guys want to travel with us right there, akettours.com, or you can um, email us um, and, you know, get more information and come travel with us. We had a really good time. Really, really good time. All right, Professor. All right. So we are anxiously of waiting to hear, to hear this, um, you know, uh, family, when I call Professor, Small, and we were, you know, um, talking about this, Taiki and I and, and Professor. And, you know, he just started talking, saying some stuff. I was like, you know what, just stop talking. I, well, I'll see you on Happy Talks <laughs> because, you know, there was no way. I was like, oh, God, I'm not going to be able to. I was driving. I was like, I won't be able to get everything down. And so I'm so happy that you decided to come over and have a conversation with us about this topic, about the Dahomey tribe. Did I say it correct? Yes, but it's the Dahomey ethnic nation. It's cool to be a tribe, but the enemy has put his filthy tongue on it. So we're ethnic nations. And an ethnic nation consists of a group of people that speak the same or similar languages. They live in a common geographical space. They practice a historical familiar cult, similar culture. Um, they may have varied uh, ecology from fishing to hunting to to farming that make up the greater society. At their core, they'll have an elder society. At their core, they'll have a sense of a divinity. At their core foundation, they will have the revering of their ancestors. And so that is called an ethnic nation. Um, oh. And so let's use that term instead, an Afri Af African ethnic nation called Dahomey. And it wasn't always called Dahomey. And the Dahomey, I hear people saying, the Benin of today is the Dahomey of yesterday. No, Dahomey of yesterday was about one third the size of the Benin of today. It was a very small kingdom. Um, it came into being as a kingdom that wasn't called Dahomey, you know, way back and who? the BCs, and the kingdom was established by one of the children of the founder of the Yoruba nation, Oduduwa, and one of his sons, 
develop, who was sent out by the father to develop different kingdoms. One of them developed this kingdom, that it was a Yoruba kingdom that evolved with its own peculiarities into what we now call Dahomey uh, or Benin. But Benin today involves a lot more land mass than the traditional or the ancient Dahomey did. Okay. And I know that in this movie, I haven't seen it. I've studied it. I've read the, um, a lot of things. And I know one of the European writers made a statement that they wanted to show that Africans sold Africans. And I go like, wow, is that kind of like the compost or the compost in Germany, those Jews who sold Jews into the concentration camp? Is that, are they making the same reference you know, they're called campos. They sold out their own people, you know. Many of them were even guarding the ghettos in, in Warsaw, where their people was enslaved and imprisoned. So maybe that's what they're making reference to. And, and so there is some truth in that. The Dahomey Kingdom, for a period of a little less than 100 years, maybe about seven years, 70 years, was involved in the slave trade. They tried to make it bigger than it was. The homie wasn't that bigger, bigger, as big a slave trading area as now we're hearing in the media. You know, the Portuguese had invaded Congo before then. Um, they had invaded further up the coast in West Africa before then. They had invaded Mozambique. A lot of us don't realize we come from Mozambique. They had invaded Madagascar. And before Dahomey even got into the business, that's where the bulk of us was coming from Congo, Angola, Madagascar, um, that, those areas, Malawi, okay? So history will erase the crazy man's mystery and let you work your black magic. So just like we have black people in our community today that sell drugs to our people, we had black people that sold some of us into slavery. But 99 point, and they had no idea what they were doing because none of them had ever been to America to know what chattel slavery was all about. They saw themselves practicing a servitude system which fundamentally did not carry the inhumanity of chattel slavery. But unfortunately, they have to wear the scar of history for having done that, okay? And this thing about warriors, Africans did not call themselves warriors. And we need to stop doing that the African warrior queen, the African warrior king. We didn't have war societies. Show me the war societies in Africa. Most African community had what we would call today a militia, which was made up of all the young men of the community. who was a part of a secret societies, but their primary purpose was to be a defensive protecting unit for their community. And they did not have any significant military weaponry well, significant military training past the martial arts training and the wrestling skills that all young black men in the secret societies was taught back in those days. And these are the forces that had to go up against a Dahomey kingdom, which was armed by the Portuguese with weapons we had never seen. And we were hunters and fishers and, and um, farmers so there wasn't much of a fight we can do when our village got raided. And I know they're going to talk about the, um, the, the warrior, the, the female king. Well, and they want to make that like it's an anomaly and, 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 and the homie. Somebody ought to take them back to meet Sister um, Hatshepsut, who was king of all of Kemet. And before Hatshepsut, we know at least five other female pharaohs of Kemet. So a female king in Africa was not an anomaly. Okay? It was common. Today, my goddaughter, okay, who uh, is the king of Congo. She is the queen of the Luba people. Yes. And she is the king of the entire Congo today. Queen and Zenga was the king of Angola. She wasn't the queen. The Westerners got us called the queen and Zenga. No, she was king. Mm. She was the king, queen. You wear both titles. Okay. 
So what we and so we need to yes, it is fantastic. You know I love Viola Davis. I love that woman, right? She my sister. And and she made it clear that when she got into this industry, she wanted to be Cecily Tyson. Cecily Tyson is the greatest black woman that ever got involved in cinema. Yeah. You know, yeah. ever. And I don't think anybody will ever equal her African integrity, let alone her African beauty. You know? Yeah. And Viola comes close and I've watched her work through the years. But this is not her movie. This is white people's money paying for this movie. Yeah. Okay. And when you dance to the music, you pay to the piper. Okay. The piper is the one who puts up the money. Okay. Understand that when we make analysis. And thank God I've been allowed to be in the movie industry for about six years, not mm -hmm. on the back seat. I'm on the front seat right beside the producers and executive producers as primary uh, consultant for the Godfather of Harlem for ABC, Disney, Epic, and MGM. And so I wear the red tag on top shelf, right? And yes. people run and bring me my chair when I come in and give me my headset and give me my video. Not that that matters so much, but what it has allowed me to see is what this thing is really all about. It's all about propaganda. Yeah. It's all about mind control. It's all about cultural management using the power of the cinema. And you got to understand that. Otherwise, you get bamboozled. There's going to be a lot of beautiful mm -hmm. things in uh, the, 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 the female king. Beautiful things about Black people that we need to know and we see. But also keep your eyes open for the subliminal, uh, subtle attack on the integrity of Black culture, Black race, and on Africa itself. I know we okay. saw that interview with um, what's this little guy named on CNN, where the white woman, when he asked, uh, "Lemons," I don't know what he was thinking. About, yeah. he was he could have responded, but he was afraid because he's smart enough to know she was full of crap. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. he didn't because he's scared for his job. And I understand that. But for mm -hmm. her to have the audacity mm -hmm. to say that the, the British naval people who was killed uh, trying to boycott the slave trade in Africa should be given reparations. And that if you're going to blame anybody, start at the beginning where the Africans are selling Africans and put them in cage on the beach. Yeah. Tell us to produce the history of that. You, they have the best history kept in the modern world. Show me your documentation. Show me yeah. your history, all right? And they can't show you history because the reason the British was ending the slave trade had nothing to do with freeing African people because they weren't ending slavery. They were, they were inhibiting, right, the mm -hmm. free labor that was coming to their former colonies of America and Canada that have broken away from them and was becoming super wealthy on free labor. And the second reason, because they had as many enslaved Africans in Britain, many of whom they took to help build Sierra Leone mm -hmm. okay, during a period of time. But once the Irish rebelled and the Scots rebelled and says, you're using free labor and we are starving to death, we want to be paid for our labor and you got to get rid of those people to stop an on land rebellion in their own land they instituted wage slavery on their own people and sent us back to africa i'm trying to play some game like they did some humanitarian stint for us give me a break fool i know history i study i love history history yes. is like a bottle of cabassier in one hand and and, and, and red wine from south africa in the other you know what i'm saying what, did say a bottle of cabassier Girl, is I love you there. That's cool. You know, I don't drink the whole bottle, you know what I'm saying? But yes. Let's say a glass of cool water, right? Yes. But you so, understand what I'm saying? Let's yes. Learn our history. And that's what mm -hmm. Happy is trying to show us how to use history to declare your economic, political, and cultural freedom. Mm -hmm. All right. How to listen. When you study history, guess what you're doing? You're listening to the affairs of the ancestors. History is your ancestral record on how you can go forward. Kemet mm. is the greatest mm. preservation of physical historical elements left. Now, if you went to West Africa, that's it, or in Congo, you won't find the stone buildings, 
because they were building out of wood and it didn't survive. But guess what the history is? It's in the culture. Yes. It's in the language. It is in the dance. It is in the music. It is in the drumming. The same history you get in Kemet is preserved mm -hmm. in the records of the drums. It's preserved in the records of the dance. It's preserved in the structure of the language. You understand me? That's why you have to learn Medunetja, because Medunetja will tell you how to study other African languages and learn oh. from them. You know. Okay, wait, Professor, I gotta stop you, okay? Yeah. Oh my God, first of all, you done, you done did the whole interview like in 20 oh, minutes. you were gonna I interview me. Oh, Listen, you, you say I forgot about that part, yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, wait, you you saying to you done took us from, from the Don Home and now we talk about you not you not you gotta know meta natural. Well, you you gotta give us some breaks up in here. Okay, mm -hmm. let me just let's just back up for a minute. Okay. First is let mm -hmm. me tell people who I mean, if you don't know who Professor James Small is, um, this is a good time for you to know who he is, right? But he's when he's talking about being on set, he is the consultant for um Godfather of Harlem and um and as his, you know, many jobs that he has, one of them is that he gets the scripts, he has to, you know, look through them, and he has to make sure that it is, that they are telling uh, um, an authentic story, okay? So sometimes, you know, um, like you were saying, you know, they want to kind of show one type of a story, but Professor Small is on the front line saying, oh, no, 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 that's not how that went down. And so it is so crucial when we start talking about like our images and and um, and how we are portrayed in the world, that we have people who have African integrity. All right, that's a that's a that is a term that you um, coined when I was talking mm -hmm. to you, as I put it in the title. So, can you first just talk about um, what what is African integrity and how um, and how right. uh, and how do you maintain it? Right. Let's go back to um, the female king. And again, Viola is going to, I know she's done her best to give us the best in mm -hmm. terms of an image of an African woman with power. Um, as I learned um, from my queen, King Diambi, who's king of the Congo and queen of the Luba people, she showed me that, and I learned this from my godmother and spiritual mother, Nana Fuasa Afriye and Kumasi, who's now my ancestor, uh, she told us that women represent the power. Mm. Men yeah. represent in African society the authority. The authority is given to men by the power. So when we go back to Kemet, you see Aset sitting with a throne on our head. The throne represents the seat of power. And then you see Heru, which symbolized the male king figure sitting on her lap. In the posture she's sitting in, she is the throne of Africa. And the male god sits on the throne at the behest of the powerful mother. That's mm -hmm. our culture. It wasn't some women running wild, swinging swords. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's not doing it happen at all, right? So yeah. that's African integrity when you reference this kind of history. See, mm. so you can understand that if you went to Ghana today and you went to the nation of the Ashantis, they have a king of kings called Santa Heni. Okay? Ose Tutu who is the Santa Heni, the king of kings. But also Ose Tutu got to be the king because the queen mothers of the community selected him to be the king. Mm. You understand? All of the kings are selected by the women and referred to the men to be instilled with authority having been given by the power, which is the female of society. Mm. You know yes. So our women weren't trying to rival men. I want to be the king and I don't want to be the queen. That's stupid Western murder cult stuff. You know, we didn't play that. You know, because yeah. you saw them try to impose that on Hatshepsut and Kemet. They saw Hatshepsut's brother wanted to kill her and do it. That's all foolishness. Oh, you know Show me in writing. Give me some data 
for what you're saying. And you know, oh. the authority lied with the queen to become king until the boy was mature enough to sit on the throne with the authority granted by the queen. So we need to study history, get rid of his mystery, yes. and then you see the African integrity that will tell you, you can stand back and go, hmm, mm hmm, hmm. Well, you know, you know, you know what, let me just interject for a quick moment when you talk about Queen Heshep said. So we were um, one morning when we were in Kemet, we were get, we were um, uh, getting ready to get on the hot air balloon um, in Luxor. And, you know, we're all sitting there. And so the guy who, you know, he's he's telling us, OK, you know, we're going to get on this balloon and, then, you know, we're going to see Queen Heshepsut, uh, her her temple. And, you know, she used to, you know, she had, had to dress up like a man. They had to, she had to make, put a beard on because she was trying to be like a man. And we're all sitting looking at this fool. OK, literally like he's a fool. But the cool the, the thing that I really appreciate the most is that everyone there understood that he was not telling the right history. It wasn't it wasn't like we were like, oh, really, that really happened. Like everybody you know, we didn't, we didn't like, you know, like say, okay, wait, that's not, we didn't have to converse. We all knew that he was not telling the truth. He was not telling our history. And so, mm -hmm. no, um, it's just, it's, it's, a, uh, it's just like when you're saying this will and these swords, you know, right. people just say whatever. And if you don't know the history, you just start believing this. Right. So you go if ahead. you go to any significant ceremony in any African mm -hmm. kingdom, be it Dahomey, Benin today, and I've been to Benin multiple times. I'm an adept of voodoo, you know. I sat at the feet of the voodoo priest and was blessed 20 years ago in Benin, you know. I was raised in the voodoo tradition by Rulax Merlin, Mahogun, almost 50 years ago. Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> Think about it, I'm getting old. Mr. Merlin, wow. So I have a sense of what is going on in Dahomey. And what mm -hmm. is going on in Dahomey is a transformation. What they don't say is that the internecine wars of the Muslim invasion of Africa, starting as early as the eighth century, had pushed down into what we know today as West Africa. And the internecine wars we had to fight in defense of ourselves had depleted the male population, and particularly and especially in Benin. Because though Benin made a lot of mistake in attacking poor people, they wanted to make revenge against the Northern Islamic invaders that had been carrying on the slave trade in Africa for 1500 years before the Western Christian white folks came and teamed up with them. They don't have that discussion, all right? There was a, a system in place where the Arabs, by this time the Arabs have been defeated and gone out of the picture, the Turks and the Eastern European Serbs will take over Islam from the ninth century until the 20th century. You all hear me? And they were running the slave trade in Africa, selling us into China, into Indian, called the Indian Ocean slave trade, selling us into Europe, calling the Trans-Saharan slave trade. This is going on before 1492. So they've got the system in place of genocide. And many of us who have converted to Islam now became in partnership with them. So the home is first defending itself against something. And I can see where they fell into the corruption themselves, that three generations of kings. But they started out defending themselves against something. And when the male population of soldiers had been depleted, they had no choice but to bring the women into the military and train them in warfare skills. So let's wow. tell the real story, the whole story, the way the story was, you know? And the many of the women who initially were brought into the military were women who had been captured from other communities in these internecine wars. And so those women were symbolically the wives of the king. Mm. Okay. He didn't have sex with them or produce children with them. They were symbolically his wives because he was the king and he was responsible for them. 
if I lived in Africa today, in Kenya, in Ghana, in Nigeria, and I have five wives, and I die, my eldest son must marry my five wives because he's now responsible for them. You understand? Yes. So we need to understand our culture. So when yes. people say they're bringing it to us, they will bring bits and pieces of it. And they will even bring glorification of the elements they want to. But they're going to slip other stuff up in there. And you got to be careful. Like one of the guys who's the aide to the king. People say, well, let's see, he's just in there for a second or a minute. But they're going to put a guy as an aide to a king who represent the LGBT community. Mm. That wasn't happening, brothers and sisters, at home. Now, since our enemies and the Christian church and the Islamic have been in Africa, they brought all their poisonous behavior with them. Oh, but so let's study poisonous. our culture. Let's study our culture. Let's yes. understand how it works. That if the male, and we saw it in Ghana with Yah Santiwa, the Queen Mother of Ajisu, when the British defeated and captured the King of the Ashanti, who became the leader? She became the king. She became Santa Henny. That's Ya Santiwa. You see? Yeah. And she and she stood in the spiritual integrity tradition of Africa as a woman king who took on the might of the British army. People say, oh, she did that because the men were afraid to fight. That's crap. They had captured the king and his court. And the mother, the power who had given the authority to the king, now took authority and power and led her nation against the enemy. Know your culture. Know the truth. And the truth shall set your mind free. Absolutely. Um so with this with this idea of um, of African, um, you you touched upon it. I mean, that's what you're talking about, African integrity. How um, one of the things when I was talking to you on the phone, and you were, you know, you were just kind of talking about just how we are today, um, in, in terms of just how we are in all of our jobs, not just if we have a Hollywood job, but just how we how we you know mm -hmm. are in the world and this idea of African integrity. How can we, I mean, is there checks and balances? Like, what, how can we develop that if we don't have you it? You must know history because history is the behavior of your ancestry. That's your blueprint. If you don't know your blueprint, how can you build yourself into a building? You got to know what the blueprint is. Your ancestors is your blueprint. Your ancestors is your history. You see? And so once you start learning history and realizing, wow, when we came on the slave ships to America, Africa came on the slave ships in our mind. Africa came on the slave ships in our DNA. Every mother on that ship adopted every child on that ship. Every man on that ship adopted those women as their wives and their sisters. That was the African way. So when they took us on the plantation and sold your wife over here, Okay, we got it. We can't do nothing about that. But there's another sister that needs a husband. So your husband over here, okay, but there's another brother that needs a wife. So your children over there, there's a bunch of orphans that need a family. And we just kept, that's African integrity, how we kept the flow. They couldn't understand it. When I grew up on that plantation in South Carolina, we call everybody Ka. I didn't know what Ka means. I still don't know what Ka means. So we said, Kababy, Kamari. All the women was called Ka. And all K the black men was called Captain. So okay. Captain Jink, Captain Sam. My grandpa was called Captain Man. He was a bad <laughs> little dude. So he was Captain Man. Long before they had a Captain Man, I grew up under Captain Man, right? And so everybody, what, what those two words meant is that everybody's your family. Everybody on this plantation is one family. So yeah. means relationship, right? 
I'm related. It's like the Yoruba word, Lukomi. You mm-hmm. belong to me, I belong to you. Yes. Ka meant the same thing. You belong to me in this rice field, I belong to you. you see? And so they couldn't get it. That's African integrity. Mm. You know, We didn't have to use an African word. We could take your word and twist it. There's a story that's going to come out soon, written by a sister from Haiti, and it's called the Dadas. Now, the old ladies on the plantation where I live was called Dada when they got old. Dada. The Dadas were the black women who had gotten too old in Haiti, because, according to Ezele Danto, they had gotten too old to work anymore. They had gotten too old to be molested and have babies or sex anymore. So the church took them in and made them lay leaders to try and teach the young girls how to be good Christians. Well, these dadas are the women who end up teaching all the black women and mambos who launched the Haitian revolution. You understand? When is this coming out? It's called Africa Integrity. Well, we're trying to get somebody to buy her script now or to take the script. Okay. It's African Integrity. So before we even get to Tucson or Dessaline, you got to get to these old ladies that produce the women that produce that produce Tucson and Dessaline. Mm. It's deep, this African integrity thing. And many of those old women came from where? Dahomey. Mm. Okay. Most mm. of them came from Benin. Dahomey. Guinea. When they were saying Guinea, they meant generally all of Africa, but particularly Dahomey was their Guinea, their home. So, so you know, I, I got a question, um, and this is kind of um, this is in relation. To, I see somebody um, in the chat um, was kind of alluding to this too, in terms of um, so you know, like what you do for the Godfather of Harlem. You're really like the checks and balances, right? Mm-hmm. Make sure that it's, it's not easy now. It's a fight, but I'm blessed yeah. because in six years, there are people who are partner with me, especially Chris Brancato, who's the showrunner and the boss of bosses with the writing and his writing staff. Um, guys like um, Forrest Whitaker, who backs me. So in this coming series of The Godfather that will start in January, you're going to see the Yoruba religion. You're going to see Luke May. You're going to see us cashing. That's See, okay, you know what? I'm with Rob. Listen, Rob, right here. I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. He's like, this. He's like, well, you should have been consulted on this film, you know. And so, I, you know, my question is, is that in terms of like, you know, um, you know, there were people before, before like Viola Davis and and his um, mm-hmm. and her husband, because you know they they produced this film, um, mm-hmm. like Ruby D. It's right here. I, you know, in fact, let me just put it up here. Okay, Ozzy Davis and Ruby D. insisted on black writers. Viola and her husband are producers on The Woman King. Mm-hmm. What is the root for why they don't insist on Black writers and or African scholars to consult? Like, why are we so afraid? I mean, they do. I can. I learn from the people there. They do fight for this. There is a small cadre of people who are constantly fighting for this. I wouldn't have this gig that I have had it not been for Forrest Whitaker insisting. Mm. Okay. Mm. Those people were telling me after I'd worked for three years for nothing, they were saying, oh, we don't have the money. Once they got the money, so we don't have enough money. But Forrest said, let me make some calls and you don't say nothing. And then I got a phone call and said, you know what? We found some money. <laughs> because Forrest insisted, right? <laughs> the money and, just and, came and up and the guy. <laughs> then he got support from Chris Brancato, you know, the, the showrunner. Um, but there are many black, like on this set, this is probably the, the blackest set in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. All right. Nearly 90% of the makeup artists are black. 90% of the wardrobe people are black. We've got black cameramen. We've had at least in the series six black directors. But um, you know, but they also we've got have black you. ADs. Huh? But they also have you, um, Professor, because, listen, you and I have had lots of conversations about some yeah, things. Yeah, I do, I do have a heavy feet because there's nothing they could give me. I'm not for sale. So let me, let me, let me, let um, me, before, before I, I read this to you, let me just say, family, please like and share this video. Okay. Um, right. You know, well, this let's is. Let's stop for a second. 
family, please send your cash app. And oh, okay. To, I'm like, um, hey, we can talk cash app too. <laughs> yeah, we want to have a film by a cash app. Yeah, because um, you know, listen. Sham, what is at Happy Film? Because they you know, need the money. Happy Film needs this money to continue doing what we're trying to do. Yes. Um, please buy the artifacts. Please go to Happy Talk. Look at all of the things from the 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 t-shirts to the sweatshirts to the whatever else we have, paintings or, or, or whatever. You need to tell well, them. Here. You know. well, yes. It's important. Yeah. yeah, that people know we yeah. have these items. And yes. these are things, Christmas is coming up. Many of us don't, but most of our families do. So let's let's give let's gift them with some happy gifts. You know what I'm saying? Like Instead the of the usual gift. old gifts. Let's do some, let's get ready for Kwanzaa with some happy gifts. And you we know? will have some new happy gifts coming. We got some new happy stuff coming. Well, tell and us you know, about some of the some of the gifts that they people can buy. Yes. Yeah, so right now, I mean, we have a plethora of t-shirts. With our happy, um, our our happy with happy on logo. there, um, yes, our happy logo. But it's actually you know the happy deity. Um, and then we have three feature films. You can download them, you can stream them, or you can get the DVDs. We have the Tekken, we have Nubia, the untold story, and we have Happy, which is where Happy Talks came from. The um, the documentary has over thirty scholars. Professor Small actually opens up Hoppy and he ends Hoppy, okay? Um, and it's so important uh, for you guys to just watch it so that you can understand where Hoppy mm -hmm. Talks comes from. But um, the other piece, and then we have hats, um, we have movie posters. And so, um, you know, please family, you can um, purchase something from hoppyfilm.com or you can hit us on the cash app. If you are on Facebook, you can just buy stars. It's really super easy. Buy stars, and it's another way that you are contributing to us. Um, I saw that somebody was asking for PayPal. Yes. Um, you know what? Uh, I will have, I'll put it in the chat, our PayPal address. Um, but then also you could, um, if you are on YouTube, you can hit the super chat. And, you know, those are all ways that you can give to us. And we have a GoFundMe campaign that we keep up on our website, which is at happyfilm.com. Um, so you know what, um, Professor, I wanted to I want to read this to you because you alluded to this um, earlier. Um, you know, I tell you, this this little uh, this little technology today. Anytime that we're about to say some stuff, it starts it starts messing up. All right, because you talked about the, the the writer. So there's two writers, and they're both um, two white women. Okay, that are the the writers for the show. And so, because I was wondering, I was like, you know, as soon as I, I saw this thing, the first thing I wanted to know was who was who wrote it, who um, who's directing and who, it. Who has scrutinized them because they don't even have a sense of African integrity. Well, yeah, and no. You none. really have to teach them that. And you yeah. really have to scrutinize. I've been blessed with Godfather because there was a couple of people that wanted to learn, you know, and we're able to bend some curves um, and you'll see in, in this, when, when this next series comes out and we address the assassination of Malcolm X, you're going to see a prominence on the CIA's role. You're going to see a prominence on the FBI role. Okay. Like you've never yeah. seen nowhere else. No. You know, you're going to no see Malcolm with Ernesto Che Guevara. You have never seen that discussion before mm. and other things so that we can make a point. You know, um, yes. that you can tell the truth with cinema and still make money. I can't begrudge nobody making money. The man put up $85 million for this thing. He needs his money back. So cool. Let's make some money. But let's not make some money at the loss of African integrity. We can make Absolutely. money still projecting African integrity. Just like when yes. you do Jewish integrity or Irish integrity or Catholic integrity, you don't demean them, you project them, okay? Yes. So project yes. us, you know? Because this thing about, let's go back to the slavery in Dahomey. Dahomey comes into its power by 1720, okay? That means that's when it's con con it, it, it conquered Aleda and, and Wida on the coast, because it was more of an inland thing. It's still not in in 1720. It is not into the 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 um, 
uh, the 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 slave trade yet. It it takes them another 20, 30 years. So it it is it's by 1750 they're beginning the slave fighting wars and selling their prisoners of war into slavery to the Portuguese. This all ends by 1852. So it's less than a hundred years that this process is going on. And it is a small kingdom. And at the end of the day, when we really look at it, they only sold a few thousand people. They were not involved. I doubt if they sold a hundred thousand people, okay? Because of the area we're talking about, because of the size of the kingdom we're talking about and so forth. And so we're talking about millions upon millions of our people coming over here. And you're going to pick this one little isolated incident that they sold Africans, right? Well, you know, <laughs> let's is get why. it straight. Let's <laughs> not play, all right? Uh, yes. Let's talk about your army invading our people. Let's talk about you giving guns. And many of the Africans who got involved in the slave trade got involved in the slave trade because there was a white gun to their heads and a white cannon on their backs because they lived on the shoreline. They had no protection against the cannon. And when the white man put his foot ashore, we had no protection against the gun. So you take a captive group of people and force them to help you commit a crime and then blame them for the crime, play that game with somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you, yeah. So this is so this is what the um the writer said. She's like, from the beginning, Stevens wanted the story to feel like a Greek tragedy, in in uh in scope and deal with larger universal issues facing humanity. While the pitch deck had been set in the 1890s, Stevens chose to set the story in 1823 for one particular reason. I wanted to help the audience understand the difficulty of the transatlantic slave trade in the story. Over the 150 years, the Agoji women were in existence. The women did capture Africans and sell them into, into the slave trade. I wanted to address that, says Stevens. Right. That happened. Look at the timeline. See, when you study history, always use a timeline. What year did she use? 18 what? 1890. Um, okay, 1890. But they, the but they switched it. But they switched it to 1823 because they wanted to make sure we knew that we sold each other to slavery. Right. In 1823, the, the British by 1852 has cut it off completely. But in 1823, the Portuguese is not a big player on that mm -hmm. coast anymore because the Portuguese has now gone into Asia and other places. See, we got to look at the timeline because they play games with time, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, yes, that kingdom did engage in the slave trade, but they had not a clue about what chattel slavery was, first question. They were doing what other kingdoms had done before, selling their prisoners of war into what they thought was servitude. And so let's deal with all of that, Okay. Because African servitude did not take away the humanity of a person, did not Absolutely. take away the name of a person, did not rape the women who were captured. Those women were treated with the same integrity as the women of the community who captured them. So they're going to take their genocide and superimpose it over African servitude and try to explain what occurred? What? But you know what? I find it, this is so layered. So, all right, so, you know, this happened, you mm -hmm. know, According to you, this this happened, right? But but you make a whole film just to tell that piece, right? Because like, we're that's, because that's, there's a war against us as regard the reparations movement around the African world and through the Caribbean, and so they're trying to come up with ways now to turn the tide on yes. the reparations movement that have been gaining ground. And to most absolve film, most films are political. Remember mm -hmm. all. In all content, have what? All it. content have intent. There mm. is an intent that is being projected to us by the content. This content of the movie have an intent in terms of the socialization process they want to produce in your consciousness. Socialization of the values, interests, and principle they want to place in front of you as being real, whether real or not for you. 
And whoever control the images controls the history. And yes, sir, brother, all content have intent. And I didn't yeah. create that one. Dr. Asa Hilliard told us that one. Yeah. And yeah. That's one pretty... of my big teachers. So, yeah. we, but we've got to study the enemy, even when they come as a friend, because of their ignorance of African culture, African spiritual integrity, African sacred science, African historical extent, their ignorance make them your enemy. Mm. Mm. Even if it's not their intent, because their intent is informed by their ignorance, their content becomes an attack on your integrity. Yeah. Um, mm, 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 okay. You know, so you always get me <laughs> where I'm just like, I have to just this thing for a second. Um, so, you know, in, in terms of, um, you know, when you're talking about how we were, uh, you know, how we en enslaved each other, but it wasn't until, you know, we didn't rape each other. We didn't do that. Was that widespread? Slavery, there's no word in any African language you will find where the word equivalent to slavery exists. Tell mm. them, bring me that word. I'm not talking about our language as infiltrated by Arabic. And no, our language infiltrated by Portuguese, French, or English. Let's talk about an authentic African language and its etymology. They have no words for slavery because you do not enslave your sister and your brother. You understood the extent of humanity. You did have conflicts and in conflicts, there were consequences. But people who lost their rights because of conflicts did not lose their humanity as mm. a result. Yes. And that type of servitude, we need to understand. Yeah. So they want to play with us. You know, that, there's a thing on TikTok. Somebody has been like, you watch TikTok? Yeah. And they said, oh, you want to bum up? You want to play with the big boys? Come play with the big boys. Mm. We got professors out here that will blow them away. I know Viola's role was that of integrity, trying to tell a story about our people as best she can, given the situation. Well, but yeah, I know but... the writers have another intent in okay. their content. And so okay. our job is how do we take that intent and change how do we take that content and change their intent? And that's what we're going to watch Viola do her work because I know she had to take their content mm -hmm. and change the intent. Okay, so I got a question about that. So, you know, when because I was, I was thinking about this, I was like, how could this happen in 2022, right? You have the blackest people, you know, her and her husband, they are the blackest people, okay, in terms of you know, what they stand for, you know, like you said, their intent. They're trying to work with what they got. But, you know, but listen, but they got a lot. Just, let's just think about this for a minute. So why is it that we have to continuously, continuously go to a source that's not, that they, Hollywood's not looking for us, right? And the reality is that Viola Davis, who she is and all the people that she knows, she could have literally gotten millions of dollars from just her friends to no make this secret because they didn't party. do it they didn't do it i remember well, when spike lee was doing no stop now what they should have done but they don't do viola shouldn't have to go beg anybody for the money they should have been running to give her money giving her skills to do this do that kind of a story yes. but the problem with our middle class and our upper class they're not the best in the, class, the working class okay if, the, if, our, if the black middle class and the black upper class would mm -hmm. invest in the black working class, we would not have any of the problems we're having. Part of the investment in the working class is to control the images of that body of people, that race of people. And yeah. the, the, the images is controlled by those who control the universities, it's controlled by those who run the fraternities, it's controlled by those who run the sororities, it's controlled by those who have the capital. 
And our people who run the fraternity, sorority, have the capital, is not reinvesting that money into the image of the people who mm -hmm. made them wealthy enough to have the capital. Okay? So let's call them out for what they are. Because I know Ms. Davis' work, and I know her husband's work, and I know mm -hmm. they took what they had on the table, and they're trying to make it into the best they can. When Spike Lee was doing Malcolm, you remember, he couldn't finish the movie. He had to mm -hmm. go begging for money. Because the white folks thought he had gotten too black on them, and they pulled their money. And he had mm -hmm. to go begging to get the little bit that he got. Okay, But that's what's real, because we need to check. Not the artists. The artists who maintain integrity, yes, let's hold them accountable. But the people who finance the arts is not the artists, because they don't have that kind of capital. The people who finance the arts is the black entrepreneurs who give money to all the white foundations and all the white charities every year, mm -hmm. but don't support black charities. Mm -hmm. Most black charities don't exist because the black billionaire and millionaires and billionaires didn't just come on the scene with Oprah. We had black billionaires before Oprah. Why they chose to project that in that way, that's again the system playing image games, right? And I'm happy for my sister. I wish she had made more money, you know? And she has used it relatively well to help her people. But we have black millionaires by the tens of thousands. We've got in Africa black billionaires that's wealthier than most of the ones in Europe. But their minds have not been informed and have not been transformed by the wisdom of their ancestors. They're worshiping a white deity. They're worshiping a white culture. They're practicing a white socialization process. And in all of that, hating black folks, starting with self-hating, is at the top of the table's menu. And that's the problem in our community. The hope would be that a piece like this, the female king, would help crack some of that. You know, even if it has some poison in it, you know, it's like the blowfish. If you eat it right and cut it right, you avoid the poison and you ingest the fish. You know, it's like there's some sushi fish. There's certain sushi fish, you eat the wrong part and you out of here like that. Wait, 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 professor, <laughs> professor. <laughs> oh my God, I so like that analogy. You're right. But what's happening though, is that I think too many people don't know how to avoid the poison. I agree, because of <laughs> ignorance of history. If you're other... ignorant of your history, you mm -hmm. don't know what your system can tolerate or can't tolerate. You mm -hmm. don't know what to program your system to reject and eject or to ingest and digest. And that's what kills us. And it comes back to history and culture. Yeah. Because if I don't love you, killing you ain't no problem for me. If I don't love me, rather, killing you ain't no problem because you are me. So if I hate me, how the hell am I going to love you? Absolutely. And I hate me because I don't know me. And if I don't know me, I can't value me. And if I can't value me, I can't recreate me as a value to you. Mm. So, okay. Um, so I, 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 okay. So what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, she shouldn't have to have asked for money. We should, there should be things I'm sure like. I'm she did, but I'm saying knowing the history, that money is not forthcoming. Why haven't there, you know, when we go back to the day of Brother Michaud down mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, able to build a movie industry. Oscar Michaud? Yes. Okay. Oscar yes. Michaud. Yes. Yes. I, I, yes. Knew, I knew his brother who ran the bookstore in New York. He gave Wait, me my first book on black history, you know? Wait, you Oscar Michelle's brother? That was his brother. Oh my God. How do, I, how do I not? Okay, we're going to talk about this later, but go ahead. Okay. okay. My ah. first book on black history, because I went in the store, I didn't have money, so I said, sneak it in, sit in the back and read the book. So one day he came in and says, You can't read these books. You got to buy them. I said, But I ain't got no money. He said, Well, why? <laughs> go get some money. <laughs> I said, I make $50 a week as a security guard. I said, but I got, I'm starting to save some money. And he went on the ship and got me J.R. Rogers, Black Man of Color, the big hardback. And he gave it to me as a gift. My first Black history book was given to me by Brother Michelle. So see, they, they had a certain historical integrity 
a certain racial integrity, a certain understanding of African integrity that allow them to behave in a certain way. You can't be socialized as a European in black skin mm -hmm. and behave as an African. It just doesn't work like that. Okay. So I got one, this is, I got one more question about this. Why is it that we are going to their table? Because there's people like, I see right here, Holly Garima. Okay. You know, he's, he's made lots of films. Um, you know, now, I mean, he begrudgingly put Sankofa on Netflix and that was because Ava DuVernay asked him to, and this, this and that. He wasn't really interested in, in doing that. But I'm saying like, why, why is it that, you know, if we're going to collect, if, if we're going to start contributing our money. The answer is the same. Ignorance of history means ignorance itself. If you live in a society with competing ethnic nations and mm -hmm. you haven't defined your ethnic nation on the foundation of its historical integrity, you cannot compete. It is simple. Black studies has never been a myth. It's one of the biggest weapons we've ever had. And until mm -hmm. we learn how to use the weapon of black studies, Black history, African history, African culture, to recreate ourselves and transform ourselves, this is not going to change. Being born with black skin is not going to transform you into an African revolutionary. You must be socialized. You yeah. must have a value system Absolutely. predicated on a history of a set of ancestors that tell you this is your enemy and this is your friend. This is of value to you. This is of no value to you. This will destroy you. This will preserve you. Yeah. Okay. And and so we back to why Happy started trying to tell the story. Using yes. A river, right? <laughs> yes. With, to tell the story about the history of a people and how they created themselves and constantly with their culture recreated themselves through thousands of years of time. And if we study the history and see how they did it, we can then begin to do it in our time. That's yes. what we're talking about. Yes. And, you know, um, so family it's really important that, you know, a lot of the structures that we're talking about right now, like we're talking about, you know, black film companies, people that are doing this stuff. We have to actually there. We we actually have it already in our communities. It just needs to be supported. Right. But for instance, don't, I don't like Holly, you know, and I know Holly. He's my brother. And I know that's one of your teachers. And I no, love no, no. Him. Yes, he's my mentor. He's your mentor. He's my mentor. <laughs> Yes, yes. And so, uh, the fact that he went to Netflix, I don't have a contradiction with that. We live in a multi-ethnic society. And there's all, kinds of, let me finish, there's all kinds of tools in here. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have the wisdom to use the tools, like others use the tools, we will be left behind the eight ball. Yes. You know, it's like people say, well, I ain't going to vote. Okay, then what are you going to complain about when the government does what it does? No. Voting is a tool. Mm -hmm. Use it. If like, Netflix yeah. is there to get this message out, we couldn't get the message of Sankofa out to enough people. Let's use Netflix and get the message of Sankofa out. Or, but Professor, I'm sorry. I mean, we, while we're working for something else, but we've been working for that something for decades on decades on decades, and we don't have it. Professor, we do. We have Quayley TV. It is owned by a black sister who no, started out, one, and one now thing she's we don't have is the consciousness of the people to support yes. the Quayley TV. You can invent anything black you want yes. and you can have 10 million black folks looking in the opposite direction and you ain't got nothing. You got to get the minds of those 10 millions to look in your direction. You can't just say, because I'm black enough to create something black, the, the other 20 or 80 million of you, why aren't you supporting me? They don't even know you. You don't, you, you, you and see, we haven't got this yet. Black skin ain't enough to label yourself as an African. Mm, mm. Black skin ain't enough to label yourself as an African. You got to yeah. have a black consciousness based on the history and, 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 and the, the, the teachings of your ancestry. And if you don't have that, we stay in the slave camp whether the chains is on our wrists or not. We stay voluntarily, just like Carter G. Woodson said. Okay, hold yeah. it right there. Family, please like and share this video um, because Professor is is um, wow. You're just going up over there, Professor. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, 
please, um, family, um, make sure that you are supporting um, the Hoppy Movement um, because we are a Black production company who has been releasing Black films, and we need everybody to see these Black films. Right. Um, and, and here's how we're doing it. Support us financially so we can make more films to transform your mind and the minds of others so they can see us. Now, let me finish. So that they can see us making Black films. So you can't, we had a whole generation tell our people, let's come together with everybody else and everything going to be everything. And that's the human thing to do. And we did that and we came together with everybody else, but everybody else is doing their thing on don't give a damn about our thing. So now we got to back up. I said, wait a minute. We got to do our thing. Like everybody else is doing their thing. And we behind the eight ball because to learn to do your thing you had to know who you are doing the thing. Mm. That's our plan. If you don't know who you are doing the thing, the thing don't get done for you. <laughs> oh, Professor, you have to watch this one. I know you don't watch these after you do them, but you're going to have to watch no. these. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll be, I be giving it back to you the next day, and you was like, who said that? I'm like, you said that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The spirits yeah. say that. Make yourself a conduit for them to walk through with vibrations called words, concepts, and ideas to help mm. us work this thing out. Happy is a university. Mm. Happy are teachers. Um, and so we have to be clear about that. Your little phone is blowing up over there. They say, <laughs> all right. You know why professor's taking his call? Um, you guys, please, please, please make sure you, that you are um, contributing to the, um, the happy movement. Um, this is what it's about. We're changing the minds. I'm gonna have to, re I'm gonna have to rewind this so I can get the part where what he just said about, so you can get the mind to do what the thing you have to do, to do the thing that you have to do. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that because I'm gonna use that. Um, but um, you can head over to our, uh, just make sure you like and share this video. If you're on Facebook, you can buy stars. Um, if you are on uh, YouTube, you can hit the super chat. And I have to say, um, all you guys, kudos to the um, to the chat today. Um, you guys are really having some good conversation. I'm trying to get it up here as fast as I can. Um, but um, you know, um, thank you, thank you, thank you for the support. Make sure you are liking and sharing this video, and that you send the video to three other people. Okay. That's this. That's where the magic happens is when you are sharing. Okay, because it's just like what um, Professor said. When you go see this film, you know you have to look at this film like you said a blowfish, right? You mm -hmm. have to look at it a certain way so that the poison don't get you. Okay, I like that. So well, it's like check so it out now. The blowfish out. poison is what is used in certain rituals and certain African traditional religions that if used wrong, you end up being a zombie. Mm. If used right, you go into a psycho-spiritual slumber and you come out with greater wisdom. So it's the science of knowing what to do. And that's why our history is so important because our history is the key tool of liberation, not an AK-47. We use the AK-47 in Angola. We use the AK-47 in Mozambique, and we're still not free. Mm. But we got to partner the AK-47 with the history of the ancestors' experience on Earth. Only then will we be free. And the only man that came close to explaining that was Emakal Gabral of the war in Guinea-Bissau before he was assassinated by the West because oh. they knew he got it right. But he says, in order to free the people, you must make sure you don't tamper with the culture of the people. Mm. Tell no lies, claim no easy victory. You are just full of them today. Claim no, I'm just lies. talking truth. You just yeah. talking truth. That's that's why you were on the happy on the happy talks. <laughs> the happy talks is based on is based on truth. I tell you, um, truth tellers. Um, Okay, so um, all right, so I'm I'm going, you know, okay, I'm I'm listening to what you're saying. Let's because it's important to be discussed by Ola and her husband, and not go after them, because mm -hmm. they took something that was coming out, mm -hmm. and they decide 
we have enough strength, we can challenge that system and even transform what their content is and change its intent. Now, I've sent some people to watch it and we've discussed and talked about it. Um, and I think they did a good job at changing the intent of those people's content. You so know. we should watch it. We should watch it, Professor, and come back and talk we about it. We should watch it and study it like we would do in any book, in any study group, because we yes. have to learn how to do analysis and we have to learn how to do criticism, both self-criticism and general criticism, so that we can be able to teach the people who don't know what we know how to see what we see. Yes. You understand? So that they can then take those tools and use it because... Movies aren't going to stop being made after this one. Mm -hmm. You know, they can take those tools and use it to, to say, oh, thanks to what Happy showed me, I can now make an analysis of this movie and see when it's attacking me and when it's projecting me. Mm. Yes. Know? Yes. Yes. And we can decide if we want to support it or not. Absolutely. Because you know, economic, it's about economic power. At some point, you know, if and, we start- We gotta constantly project what we have, you know, yeah. like, the, like the studio you talked about and the TV yeah, station you talked TV. about, um, yeah. uh, like Holly and the work that he's doing out of DC, you know, um, to, to, to really, that's part of the war. The war is for the minds, you know? The mind yes. instructs the behind. You can have the prettiest behind in the world and you don't have an African mind to instruct it and you're just going to have a used behind by white people. You know? mm. so we want to yeah. instruct the mind with African wisdom. Wisdom is real. You now, wisdom means the proper, right? When you properly use understanding. Understanding come from studying a body of knowledge that your ancestors left you. And once you properly use that understanding, that's called wisdom. And that is what you preserve to translate and to give to the next generation. Because this is a war. And our greatest weapon is our body of knowledge. That's why you're going to Kemet is so powerful. That's why they're so scared of us coming to Kemet. They let other people come in there. They let other black people come in there. But they're not carrying the message happy is carrying. Okay? No. So and let me tell you. The message. They said, listen, yeah. these, there's some messengers coming up in here now. You know, yeah, and you know. we were there. It's so funny because when we saw other black groups there being mm -hmm. led by, you know, just random Arabs, um, you know, and telling the history. And I forgot who it was that came up to me. They was like, oh, my God, I feel like just snatching them. They don't even know what they're missing. And like if Udishi would be talking and you could just see them like ear hustling, you know, because mm -hmm. I mean, he, he walked in like. With African integrity. We walk in, that's what, that, when you walk in with that African integrity, everybody knows. You ain't everybody the same. Knows. Yeah. Okay? They understand yeah, they were, who you yeah. are. Yeah. That, so, that, that's why this concept of the woman as king, because of the concept of a king in our mind, makes mm -hmm. a good statement because it's saying to the demon that has been destroying the black male, you ain't done nothing. If you think the black male is bad, light up this black female and your ass gonna be in real trouble. So we really need to take what they've done and use it the way we wanna use it. Because historically, that's what has happened. When that boy was not old enough and his daddy died, had chips that light Egypt up. And he raised a child that took Egypt back. You understand? Yeah. So when, when, when Yah Asante was king, Asante Henny was captured, Yah Santiba lit Ghana up. You understand? Took on the might of the British Empire. You know, when the Portuguese had come in and bamboozled the brother of, 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 of um, the King of Congo, um, not Congo, of, of uh, Angola, um, Queen Nzenga. She spent 50 years kicking their butts. Wow. The black woman, King Nzinga, wasn't a queen. She was a king. She was a king-queen of not just Angola, but Angola then included a large part of what we call Congo today. So 
Study history, it will erase their mystery and give you some clear vision on how to reconstruct your study groups, how to have discussions around watching the happy videos with your family in the home, that besides contributing to happy, you should have an hour set aside or two a week where you just watch one of the happy films and have this kind of discussion with your children, with your grannies, with your aunts and uncles, and, and it's cool. Have a nice cold beer there, a nice glass of wine. You don't have to go in to be the holy of holy wow, vegan yeah. to sit down and watch the tape, okay? You Wait, sit down and eat, to eat, to eat, some, eat some pork chop if you want to, you know what I'm saying? And drink your beer, but watch <laughs> the happy tape. It'll make you put the pork chop down and the beer down and get serious about your health, you know? So. Okay, I, I can safely say no one's ever said eat a pork chop and drink beer and watch the happy film, but I'm with you. Um, mm -hmm. 100%. Um, <laughs> so, um, gosh, you just, you made, you left, you made me lose my train of thought on that one, Professor. Um, a family, please make sure you're liking and sharing this video. Uh, that's super, super important. So, uh, you, you bring up a, um, a good point when you were talking about, you know, these images and, you know, and, and supporting. Um, and I, I wanted to, you know, and I just, this is just a question about, you know, your job that you're doing on Godfather of Harlem um, mm -hmm. as it relates to just, you know, what, because we don't know what conversations were, was had, you know, it, when they were trying to put this film together, we know there's a black director, um, a woman director who, um, mm -hmm. Gina Blythe, um, Blythewood, she did, you know, Love and Basketball. She's done a lot of films that we like. Um, what do you find your most challenge or who, who challenges you the most while, when you're on set? Is it someone that looks like you or is it someone that doesn't? Like when you're on Maybe set. Or not, many times it's someone that looks like you because they're afraid mm. in the beginning, right? But I didn't have a lot of issues with that. From the very beginning, somehow, everybody respected the professor, all right? And the Black community that worked on the show felt that they had a leader. I was the professor. Yes. I was theirs. And so I walk in with my dashiki on. I have all my, I have like 10 elekes hanging around my neck. Sometimes my neck is hurting, but I'm trying to make a statement, right? So I'm coming in with all my Yoruba beads on. I got my dashiki on. You know, you just like Infudishi. You just like Infudishi yeah. walk into in, into Kimmet with his, mm -hmm. you know, African integrity. Yes. Right. And so, folks got to go like, who is this dude? The first year, everybody go like, what do you do here? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just here. So I became this mystery dude. Like, why is he sitting over there? He got a little chair. He got his name on the back of the chair, but it doesn't say what he does. Right. But most of my work is done before I go on the set. My work is done with my interaction with the writers and with the chief writers, or my interaction over phone with the set designer. If they're doing a table in an African home, they call me to discuss what should be on that table, what photos should be on the wall of the moth, what should be on the wall of a restaurant, things like that. And we all kind of like work with it and get it as right as we can get it. So there's enough authenticity there so when you put the fiction in, the history challenges the space, you know? And, and, it, and it's been working very well. Bumpy Johnson isn't just a gangster. He makes love to his beautiful black wife, all right? He embraces and kisses her on the screen all the time, right? Mm. He talks and he helps his children with homework. This is the gangster, okay? Um, he helps to save his daughter who gets hooked on heroin you know, of bringing her to his, his, his brother, Malcolm. So we see another dimension of the black man. Yes, he's into crime to survive, but it doesn't stop him being a black father, being in the black community, running black businesses, and fighting to keep the black community in the hands of black people. That's the theme of the, of the piece, you know? But like yeah. all along the way, you have to argue with somebody said, well, we 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 want to do creative. Oh, you put that up there. Yeah, that's clear. Remember you yeah, yeah, you sent it to me. I sent it to you. Yes. Yeah. So, the, um, so as you're struggling, 
you're getting to know these people and they get they get rid of the fear of you and realize, well, I'm not going to do this unless I call small because I want to get it right. So I yeah. think we got to that place in The Godfather and you begin to appreciate people that begin to appreciate you because they understand we want to tell a story. We don't really know how to really tell a story, but this guy here knows some of the story, so we're going to go to him. And they have other researchers doing work and doing things because we also have Adam Clayton Powell in here. We've got Malcolm X in here and they have a story too, you know, along with Bumpy Johnson. And then we got Dr. Martin Luther King in here in an instance, you know. We've got President Johnson in here interacting with Adam Powell. We created another relationship. And that incident where the young white mafia hitman goes to the South and takes on the Klan and makes them tell where the three boys were buried, that's pretty close to what happened historically, which most people didn't know, okay? The mob did send some people to the South to deal with the Klan around finding those three boys. But we're the first one to put it in a movie, right? So trying to do things like that and get messages out that change the, the view and to see a Bumpy Johnson, not as just an incidental little guy in Harlem, because his numbers went all the way down through Jacksonville and Gainesville, Florida. You know, he was controlling the numbers in the black community up and down the East Coast, not just Harlem. And so to begin to understand that we had a sense of organization, that we had a sense of power, and that he's fighting to make sure black people can run the black community so you have a sense of community integrity or what we would call black nationalism today. And so we fight for these things. And all of us, you are in this industry, you were trained in, 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 in the movie industry. So this is a, wherever we find ourselves. And what's so beautiful, when I come in in the morning, if my chair isn't there in time, one of them young black men will make sure that chair is there. They're going to make sure my headset is on. They're going to make sure I got a stand to put my monitor on. And they tell me when I come in, they touch their heart and go, Salam alaikum, brother. I go like, well, alaikum, Salam, my brother. And, or, you know, or Lafayette, you know. So now, when, now everybody who has the is wear them to work. That's what's up. See, you know, and it, that's, they, you know, you make it a good point. When you walk with um, African integrity, you allow others to, to, to walk same. with their African inter integrity. That's mm -hmm. what's up. Yes. And so I know my brothers and sisters, the Davises, have done the best they could do. They've fought against a lot of things in other movies. Um, you know, when we watched The Help, I grew up on a plantation. My mom was the help. My mm -hmm. auntie was the help. My grandma was the help, you understand? They wore uniforms that look exactly like the ones they wore in the movie. I know that story. When they did the butler, I was a butler. Two of my big brothers and uncle was butlers for the Vanderbilts. I know that story. I am the butler. You understand? And so certain things, you know what people had to fight for to get as much into the thing that you ended up seeing, right? But if you don't know the background, if you don't know the history of the black woman who was a domestic worker in the South, you won't even appreciate the help. But those women were my aunties, my cousins, my mom, my grandmother. Yeah. So I know their story, you know? So when I see these sisters making it work, I go like, wow, they, they've done a hell of a job with that piece. Because I know the intent of the content didn't take it as far black as it ended up going. So I know those sisters fought for it and they got a good bit in, you know. So that's why we have to fight where we are while we're building over here at home what we need to build. You know, you know what, Asa Hill, that. Yep. Yep. Yes. Asa Hillier would say you have to we have to walk and chew gum. Yes. <laughs> you have to walk and chew gum. Um, you know, I have to say a special shout out to Doriel. I tell you, every time you say I something, Doriel, Hi, I know I, 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 I just put it on up there. So shout out to Doriel. Make sure you guys are following her. She has a she has a show on um on uh you know on the internet as well so make sure uh doria put your stuff up there so people can see it so i can put it up on the screen um but let's but, make sure you show your happy love you know and hit the cash love. 
You know, we got that from King Simon and peace to King Simon. He was in the um, he he was uh, in, in the chat as well. We I was on his show one day and he was talking about give, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, you can show your love, show your King Simon love. And I was like, I like that. I was like, King Simon. I'm he's about such a giving that. brother. He's he always is. unhappy. Um, yes. He, he's an extraordinary spirit, that King Simon. And, you yeah. know, I was telling, and then I'll just divert for this a minute. Too. I have two hometowns, South Carolina on the plantation and then mm-hmm. Simmonsville on Highway 17 in Georgetown, South Carolina. But I have a second home called Weed, California, up in the mountains. And there was an explosion up there three weeks ago. And we lost 90% of the historical Black community burnt to the yes. ground. So King Simon was the first to help get on board with me to help them. So I wanted the king to know that we've raised about 34,000 thus far, you know, to help that community. That's, that's what's up. I wonder who gave him the idea to do that. I don't know I what. I think it might have been you. Because you were the first one I spoke to. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and because we were leaving. You were, you were going to eat. You were going to kill yeah, we Yes. Yes. So, but yeah. I always like to shout out to the king because he's always on top of it. Yeah. But you know, this is just like what you said. The woman gets the power or no, gets the authority to, to the men. Um, king to do yeah. the to the um to do the work. That's what's up. Yes. Um, shout out to King Simon. He sent it to me. I was like, yeah, I was like, I was, I was like, I was happy that he got on there and you know, and and you know, yeah, because that's just super remember, important. Take that thing back to to to. Hatshepsut is a good place to stop and rest for a moment, but take it back to the beginning to Aset, Asar, and Haru. And Haru. And Aset shows you this child sitting on her lap isn't sitting on the mother's lap. He's sitting on the Mm -hmm. throne of earth itself. Having been given the power, the authority Mm -hmm. to sit on the throne by the mother who is the power and herself the throne. So that's African culture, see. And when we know culture, we can measure what other people do or don't do to display our culture. So we don't just get angry when we see an incident in a film that we don't think we should appreciate. But we learn to analyze and see, did the culture override that? Did the Black people involved fight hard enough that they overrode that negative? And we don't know how many negative they were able to take out that we never saw, you know? Yeah. You know, I think about those stories like when they were making good times and how the character um, uh, uh, had to fight um, uh, John, um, Amos, John, Brother John yeah, Amos. Yeah, John Amos, how he had to fight to, you know, stay in the home. Like he, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, those, they were sitcoms and we were laughing, but there was a lot of fighting that, you right. know, that black folks had to go to just, just to be and, on and you the take air, just you know. Esther Rose. How many people know that Esther Rose was an initiated and trained Akan priestess from the, 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 the kingdom of Latte in Ghana under Nana Peri Deni Zulu and the Akanadi shrine? Right. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. That's why she had the little fro because she was a she was she 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 was a a, a priest priestess. Wow. So that's why you know little things we need to know. I can say it now, Forrest, because I see you all over the internet. People put up your picture. How many people know that Forrest Whitaker is a Babalao in yeah. Lukomi, the Yoruba tradition coming out of Cuba? I went to his fundraiser two nights ago for his foundation. And his foundation, I, I like the name, you know, oh, the must... name is, is Peace and Development Initiative. This oh, man I'm... runs three refugee camps, one in Colombia, wow. one in Uganda, one in the Sudan. He's doing work in California in the school for black boys. He's training kids in these concert, um, uh, refugee camps to go to school and to open businesses and so forth. So we have people out here fighting this thing. Yeah. You know? I, yeah, I guess I guess my invitation to go must have been lost in the mail. You forgot to email it to me. Yeah, because I because of the fire thing and you know I was sick with that poison I've been for three weeks prior. So it was six weeks. I was just out of everything and I weren't going. 
It was the day of the event that one of the uh, executive producers, Jim asked me, are you coming to that? And I said, no, I just didn't have time to get that together. And he says, well, I got you a ticket. I, go, I don't have no clothes to wear. I don't have a suit. I don't have a tuck. He said, wear something Africa. So I've broken in an African robe, black, you white, walked in with- a white hat. And so I was in full booba, the only one. <laughs> and, and it was fantastic because when I walked in, the whole attention when everybody's trying to pick up, well, who is this guy? Everybody jumped. African I'm integrity. Like, the brother was sitting there, right? This, this other guy. And the brother told him, get up. Professor's here. <laughs> and he made the man get out of his chair. I was embarrassed. I said, no, you got to sit there, sit there. So his wife got up and said, well, James, you take my, my seat. And everybody was coming, hey, prop. So people were looking like, okay, who is this dude? Because I came late because I wasn't intended to go. So I came after the dinner was over and everything. But he did well. They raised good capital for the programs that he's running. I just raised that because just like Viola and her wife and 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 and, and uh, Forrest is doing similar things. He got um, what's the brother name? Um, um, that always played a tough guy, Jackson. You know, oh, and you know, his wife. His wife, yeah. um, his wife is on Broadway. Just for those right. if you guys are in New York City, she's uh, Latanya ja- um, Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson's mm-hmm. wife is um, directing the piano lesson, which is starring mm-hmm. um, Denzel Washington's um, son, along wow. with Daniel Brooks. Yeah, yeah, Didn't yeah. Didn't Denzel play in that before? Didn't Denzel do the piano lesson? Who? Denzel. Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson did, but oh. so, yeah, he's in it as well, but his wife is actually directing it. And so you, we have that one. Then we also have Wendell Pierce, who is doing Death of a Salesman. As well, okay. that's on Broadway. Um, yeah. So, so you can see there is a black storm coming, and the black storm is there. Will Smith, you know, and I'm not mad with Will. He had a breakdown. He had a conflict with his brother. Um, his brother Chris handled it like an African man is supposed to handle things, and this thing got put in the right context. You know, I don't know what brought Will to that situation, but we know him from the work he has been doing in the community, that he has not defiled the black community as much as people would try to make him. Because I remember when he went to Malawi years ago in East Africa, and when he came back from Malawi, he said, it's a wrap, I'm going to black. And, you know, he began to produce black films. They didn't get on, on the screen, you know, he couldn't get that money in the beginning. But now when we look and we see Will Smith is producing Cleopatra, you see, Will Smith is producing Queen and Zanga, and you know we're hoping that the power of those things come to fruition. What has caught your attention, Sauta? Somebody was just it, in, in the comment section. I was I was trying to read it. You know, I don't have my glasses. I don't know why I said I was so excited about sitting down here talking to you. I left my glasses in the other room, and I've been not trying to, you know. Well, uh, let's come back to Happy. What Happy film? Yeah is trying to show, and why they need you to show love to Happy Film, Cash App, because we're trying to show how to take cinema, even at this level, and make it inform and instruct the African community in such a way that our productivity as a people is increased, both economically, politically, and culturally. And we hope that our model and example becomes a model and example of people in the larger film industry to say, if these people could do it and they don't really have any money, we are here playing with millions upon millions of dollars, then we can take a stronger stand and we can make a greater statement on the behalf of the integrity of African people. So that African yeah. integrity is the first scene you see when you watch a cinema about African people. Yes, 100%. 100%. Thank you. Um, all right, fam. Um, I, I just want to uh, thank you, Professor. And you know, we should have a movie night. Like you and I should go to the movies, and we should invite anybody that's in New York to come with us to watch this film, so we can really, you know, break it down. Um, you know, because we we do need to um, to watch it, so we can. But we got to watch yeah. it the right way because we don't we don't want to have the poison get us. Right. And we want to make sure that. When we criticize the individuals who have done Mm -hmm. negative things, we don't injure our brothers and sisters who are there trying to do the positive things. 
Because mm. there's some of them who would like, because see, if we don't do nothing with this film, it's still going to project the Black image that we've never seen before on the part of a Black woman with power in the ancient days. That's going to make Black youth who don't know the details we know feel some kind of way. Our job is to help manage that feeling some kind of way so it lands in a positive place that they can use to transform themselves and grow themselves and change themselves. Yes. You can yes. use that. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm about to use all of this. <laughs> you know, I'm about to use all of this, especially the thing when you said about the thing and the thing and then, then you don't think and that's why you didn't get thing or whatever you said. I like that. <laughs> whatever I like that was. That. I forgot what it was, but I liked it. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to make sure that I, um, I get that. Um, all right, fam. I just, I just want to just thank, um, everyone. Um, it's so nice to be, um, to be back in this, in the States and to see, well, not see, but I, I see you guys' pictures, um, you know, on the, the social media, seeing everyone, um, you know, uh, you know, giving us, uh, giving us love, um, uh, you know, given happy love, it's not even about like us individuals. It's, you know, we're just doing, we're doing the work. And yes, I have started reading The Consequence of Choice. Yes. You know, and I have to, I, I wanted to, you know, sometimes you guys like send us stuff and there's, um, there's, uh, I'm going to have it the, our next um, Happy Talks. Someone sent some beautiful children's books. I was like, God, these are beautiful um, that I wanted to show you guys um, so that you could support this brother. But um, I want to tell everyone in the chat, thank you, thank you, thank you. Peace to R Rashamela. Um Nawari. Nawari is also a filmmaker. You you met him. You know the Nawari, I think so, um, at the African Street Festival. Yeah, well, may, let me say something. Let's make sure that the work that Sister Viola and her husband has done to mm -hmm. try to make this content fit a Black intent, mm. that um, it doesn't get lost in the sauce, because it's important, right? that we understand that Benin was more than a place that for Mindahome was more than a place that for a short period of time was involved in the transatlantic slave trade. Not even knowing what the hell the transatlantic slave trade was because they was not a part of what happened on that ship and in the Americas. That this was a kingdom that united a group of feudal states into a greater nation. They created an economic industry they created a trade industry with the rest of the world and parts of Africa, that they developed mm. a military force. When their manpower ran short, they were able to bring their women in and create a military that was just as powerful under female leadership as it was under male leadership. So there's a lot of positive in Dahomey. Don't let them make us look away from it and say, oh, they sold you into slavery, so we don't want to speak Dahomey no more. Dahomey gave us a lot more than that 60 or 70 years they were involved in the slave trade. Mm. So study the history. <clears throat> it gave us a religious tradition called voodoo. That's the mm. heart of the voodoo that lands in Haiti. It comes out of Dahomey, which was birthed by the greater Yoruba system. Okay. You understand me? So yes. let's, let's, let's go past the blue screen or the green screen, whatever they call that thing, yeah. and, and see see what's behind the shadows, you know? Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Professor. That's what's up. You're it's welcome. So nice. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's so nice. family, but keep giving because I know that Happy needed. Happy have a lot of responsibilities. People have declared war on us but they don't understand. You can't declare war on the children of God and win. So please, you know. Yes. <laughs> Say that again. You, you cannot can't declare war on the children of God and win. And win. Yeah. 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 That's who we are. Yes, yes, yes. We are the Ka and the Ba. Okay. We are the sunlight. And we are, it's reflection that is the moonlight. We are the constellation and the stars that make up the symbols that guide the whole universe.
Don't let them play any game they want. We just laugh because you can't take us. We are the divine manifestation. The first time the divine, what you call God, manifests as a human, it manifests as a black woman and everything else is history. And ain't nothing you can do with that. Ain't nothing you can do with that. Oh, you thinking seeing a woman king is something? Wait until you see the woman God peace that's Mm. coming, right? The black woman God peace, the The African woman woman as God. The African woman as God is God. Mm. Don't be scared to be free. Know the truth and you shall be free. So I'm gonna tell you this story and I I know I'm gonna do it in in a clean way tonight. This thing I saw on TikTok, right? And a sister walks down the street in a village in Africa and he sees this African brother. And he says to the brother, he says, may I ask you a question? And the brother said, of course, of course. He said, no, 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 would you get angry if I asked you? He said, no, of course, of course. And then so he asked the brother, why do you men like to make love to women so? He says, oh, because that's our home. We come from there. Dr. Ben told us more simply, heaven was between the legs of a black woman. But Mm. it's more completely understood that the womb of the black woman created the entire human race. And so anybody else can have any discussion they want to have. They could try to demean us all they want to do. Black woman, whether you're called the king or the queen or the maid, you are the mother of the human universe. And there ain't nothing nobody can do to change that. Nothing. Yes. 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 Um, thank you, Professor. Well, thank, thank you, Sister Lisa. You. Um, wow. Um, so, family, um, make sure that you are following us on our, all of our social media. Um, it said Happy Film. Someone was asking, where do we, where can you get a Happy Film at? Happyfilm.com. I just, I'll put it up one more time so that you guys can see that right there. You can get everything there. Um, and we also have the One Africa Conference. It's on um, It's on there as well. And Professor Small came to, to uh, Detroit and he laid it down. Um, he got off the plane and, and right on, all, it is almost like off the, off the plane and right on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we have that tape. Uh, it's, it's streaming. You can, you know, rent it, but it's 12 hours. You just might want to go ahead and download it. Uh, but it's 12, it's 13 scholars breaking down the power of unity. And really what we're talking about tonight, this idea of us taking care of each other and us being one, one community um, and, and seeing each other as one family. So, um, so family, I want to also just shout out to everyone um, in the in the chat tonight. I've seen people I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, Drastic, uh, Shakita, Miss uh, um, Carol, um, and yes, tell you well, um, hello. Um, that's what's up. It was we. Um, I met some people down in Detroit, and they're all they're up on the um, on the chat as well. Thank you, Sonia. Um, so yeah, you have any closing words? I mean, you said a lot. You said a lot, Professor. You well, have any- again, uh, my closing word is support happy. Thank um, you. Go see the movie. Uh, initially, I was not thinking about going to see it. But we know that the Davis family have stood for integrity in the Black community. So however, whatever their involvement is, is they're involved in our interests. That I know by Ms. Viola and her husband. Um, and whatever the others have tried to do, I know that black feminine power have derailed that shit. So I ain't even worried about it like that. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't really see, and look at the movie like this. Don't look at the mythical woman king. Mm. Look at the fact that she symbolized black women as king, even now. Okay. If you can make that transition, do you understand? From Dahomey. I said, wait a minute. Uh, are we the mother on that slave plantation? Wait a minute. Are we Harriet Tubman that got us off the slave plantation? Well, wait a minute. Are we Sojourner Truth walking on that street? But well, wait a minute. Are we Ida B. Wells fighting against lynching in Mississippi in the South when they blow up a house and tried to kill her? Wait a minute. 
I wish Fanny knew Hamer, who gets raped in the jail, beaten down, and still come out and says, I'm tired of being tired. What is this? Um, what's that phrase, Fanny Lou? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, and she still organized us to come to New Jersey and stop the Democratic Convention. You know, you said, wait a minute. You know, our sister who ran for president, uh, the first black woman to run for president from Brooklyn. Shirley uh, Chisholm. Sister Shirley Chisholm. Yeah. You know, she was real. So we said, wait a minute. My grandmother. Wait a minute. My auntie. Wait a minute. They've always been African female king in the African life process. And this is just an exaggeration of a moment in time that should stimulate us to look back in time even more deeply at all that our women have done, no matter what the adversity was they had to face. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I think um, I think you said a, 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 a you know a lot of powerful things tonight. And one of the things, you know, when you start talking about this African integrity, you know, just us having a conversation about this, right, mm -hmm. and having a, a critical conversation about it, you know, hopefully, you know, th hopefully they they can hear the the critical analysis. You know, um, you know that that we're talking about because you know there's some of the stuff they they may actually not even you know know or be be on their radar. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really an opportunity for everyone to level up. You know, um, you know, yeah, it's important. Well, Shango is happy, and Oya is happy, and Nimaja yeah. is happy. So, and all my ancestors, they're happy. They know yeah. that when they go to war with you, nothing can stand against you. Mm. If you don't believe your ancestors is real, spend some time talking to them. Let me tell you. Have that that's conversation. Whole, yeah, that's a whole other, um, uh, another conversation. Um, so um, just on the last note, there's, um, there's some new people up in the house. Make sure you guys are subscribed to us on all of our um, platforms. It's Happy Film across the board. IG, Happy Film. Facebook, Happy Film. Uh, YouTube, Happy Film. And Twitter, Happy Film. And make sure if, you, if, if you're on, um, on YouTube that you are not just, you know, following us there, but you actually subscribe and hit that little the little uh, bell, the notifications button. That way, as soon as we go live, you get a, um, an email or sometimes they just, if you hit the little button, it'll, um, your phone could, you know, um, could ping or whatever to let us, you know, to let you know that we're going live. So please make sure our family that you are following us. That is one huge way, you know, that you are showing support. So even if you weren't able to, um, to hit our cash app tonight, you can also you can still support by liking and sharing this video and making sure that you are subscribed to our um, our um, you know our um, all you know all that you are subscribed to all of our platforms. Um, I even see this is you know what's funny, um, Professor, is that I have a really good friend that I've known for over thirty years almost that I went to Howard with, and you know I've been talking about you know. This film, Hoppy, you know, you, you know, right here, and this is the first time ever this this person decides to get on Hoppy Talks, and because I was telling him that I was having this conversation with you, and he must have called me like two or three times and texted me today. What time is this conversation with Professor Small? So there you go, right there, James Tyler. Uh, he is a writer. Okay, yes, James Tyler. He is he is a writer. Um, he's done a lot of you know, great things. Um, some old black man is probably my favorite play that he's ever written that, um, when it comes to um, Broadway, you guys have to make sure you support. Um, but, uh, yeah, so peace. Thank you everyone who has contributed. Thank, thank you to everyone who has liked and shared, shared this video, who left a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for all you new people, you got to get down with the happy movement. Make sure you are following us on all of our platforms. All right. It's that happy film. So I think, I think we are done mm. Professor, for now. <laughs> okay, we're going to see this film and we're going to probably- I'll save Ronald Lorenzo. 
Yes, Lorenzo. Let me tell you. Yeah, Lorenzo is Lorenzo is holding happy down. Um, thank oh, you yeah. for all. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for all your support and help. Um, you know, a lot of times people sometimes they email us. They're like, "Hey, you know, I can do such and such." You know, and we're like, oh, we need such and such done. Come on, come on board. So we really appreciate those emails and we appreciate, um, you know, all the um, conversations that you guys um, have with us. And sometimes, you know, we have we are having critical conversations. It's just like what you said, not, you know, everything is always nice and smooth and we have to have criti critical analysis of everything. That's how we um, really you know, get to the next level. So I appreciate everyone up in the house tonight. I appreciate, appreciate you, Professor. Um, what? You got something else to say? No, we've done well. <laughs> you, we've done well? Okay. You know what? African integrity is about African integrity. African um, integrity. I always remember when God the divine decided to become human, it was a black woman that was the first manifestation. That's real. That's not mythology. It's not something we're making up. That's real. And just follow the Genesis. She is the Genesis stream. Mm -hmm. And follow the Genesis from her. So being a king and a homie is small stuff compared to being God manifest as human. The first stuff. And we just have to not be afraid to be our black African self, wherever we at. That's why I, mean, I walked into that spot downtown on 25 Broadway, the Courtiers or something, a big fancy restaurant, record styling. All they could see is a tall black man and an African booba, and they were all in their tuxedos feeling, why didn't I wear one of those? <laughs> you know? Wow, I'm telling you. Yes. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. You got to send me a picture so we, we can show that picture. I would love to see that. Um, yeah. All right. Well, you know, usually I, I close with your saying, but I'm going to go ahead and let you say it. And you can close yeah. the show. Yes. Brothers and sisters, the happy family. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. <laughs> I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our communities?